I'm in the Surrey Hills, an area of outstanding natural beauty, and this path behind me is fairly typical of the area. What is not typical of the area, however, is what you'll find when you walk down that path. Let's go take a look. Chilworth Gunpowder Mills was established in 1626 by the East India Company. Since then it's changed hands a few times but it remained on this site until it closed finally in 1920. Back down the path behind me there is the West Lodge. That is where anyone working here would clock in every morning and clock out every evening. And when they clocked in they had to surrender things like pipes, matches and hobnail boots. Anything that could cause a spark. So I've now stood on the dock by the River Tillingbourne. This river is very important to uh, the gunpowder making process as everything was controlled by water wheels. So the whole mill was essentially powered by this river. Not only that, but the dock that I'm stood on is where they would bring materials in for the gunpowder making process and where the finished gunpowder itself would leave in barrels that way towards Guildford. So this wall that runs alongside me here and this whole area below me there used to be the Corning House. Uh, that is where uh, pressed gunpowder was reduced into grain sizes. In 1901, February 1901, there were two men working outside the building and a further four on the inside. One of the men on the outside slipped on some ice and was wearing hobnail boots. Those hobnail boots created a spark, which in turn caused an explosion on the outside of the building, killing both of those men instantly and caused the gunpowder on the inside of the building to explode as well completely destroying the building in one go and killing all four men inside at the same time. These milling stones weigh three tonnes each and would have been used originally to grind down gunpowder. Once they became too worn to do that, they were dug into the earth here to protect anyone walking along the pathway from any potential explosions from the incorporating mill that sits just behind these stones. Some of that mill still stands today, so we'll have a look at that now. Behind me here once stood the boiler house. This provided all of the steam power uh, to run the incorporating mills within this facility. Uh, we can head in this way and have a little look. This section of buildings is easily the most impressive of what's left. You've got the river running directly behind here. There's so much of the structure left. You've got these massive thick walls, obviously in case of explosion, and these cables that run along the top of the building here. You could pull those cables in case of an emergency, water would spray into these buildings.
Towards the end of the 19th century, gunpowder had started to become obsolete and was being replaced with high explosives. So by the time World War I started, this site was almost exclusively producing cordite. The Germans did attempt to bomb this site during World War I, but unfortunately for them, their bombs fell three miles short, uh, only killing some chickens and a sheep. 